Ja, war interessant. Auf der einen Seite interessante Vorträge und ja, gute Sprecher dabei. Auch die Kontakte waren für mich wieder wichtig, um mein Netzwerk zu erweitern und zu ergänzen. Und insbesondere zur Sache, zum Thema, äh, ja, hat es neue Erkenntnisse und Aspekte gegeben rund um Wasserstoff, Wasserstoffanwendungen insgesamt. Und speziell natürlich in der, äh, in der Anwendung äh, in den Schienenfahrzeugen. Thank you, Nikolaus, for this introduction. Hello from my side. And uh, I want to uh, explain uh, some more details from our view uh, in this project and some uh, generic uh, factors uh, similar to that uh, what Maximilian uh, already explained uh, in another view. Uh, here a one page for, for Prose, uh, who we are. Uh, we are an engineering and consulting uh, company uh, based in Switzerland, our headquarters in Switzerland, and we are located in nine offices uh, over Europe. Uh, we are uh, doing uh, engineering, uh, consulting, and uh, expert knowledge uh, for rail vehicles, uh, for OEMs, as uh, Nicolaus already said, uh, but uh, in the same way also for operators, maintainers, and uh, partly also for authorities. Um, what are we doing? I understand us as an, as an integrator uh, of uh, systems. We are solving uh, interfaces for our customers. And um, how do we work? The most important point is we are independent. Uh, we are committed to our customers and ourselves and to no one else because the, uh, the shares of our company are uh, mostly in the hand of our employees. Uh, showing here uh, the uh, service portfolio, uh, it is split in, uh, in six uh, pillars. Um, we are uh, serving our customers in the field of strategy, uh, we assisting uh, when purchasing new vehicles. Uh, we uh, have a, a strong group in homologation services uh, to assist there. Uh, of course, uh, a large uh, team of uh, engineers doing engineering in rail vehicles, uh, but then also during service for, uh, for maintenance and for uh, modernization issues. Uh, as you know, uh, rail vehicles have a quite long uh, lifetime and uh, need some modernization uh, during the, uh, the lifetime. Uh, what did we do uh, in the Hydrain project? Um, the one thing is uh, our task was uh, introducing uh, rail vehicle know-how and uh, solving the relevant interfaces between the vehicle and the drivetrain as well as the uh, vehicle control system. Implementation of engineering to adapt the test vehicle for the uh, hydrogen drivetrain uh, consisting of a tank, fuel cell, converter for traction and also for auxiliary systems as well as the adaption of the vehicle control system for the uh, test driving. It was not planned for any uh, passenger operation but for the, uh, for the test drives. Um, after the test vehicle uh, could unfortunately unfortunately, uh, no longer be uh, made available after the uh, project schedule was adjusted as of September uh, last year. The focus uh, then was on the project's main areas as investigation and the, uh, the documentation. And uh, together we uh, worked on a, uh, on a handbook, 
one of these aspects, I cannot uh, cover all uh, in these 15 minutes, one of these aspects is the use value analysis as uh, uh, Maximilian Weber explained just before. Um, one such uh, focus was uh, particular uh, the development of this uh, uh, UVA uh, that takes into account the most uh, diverse influencing factors for a system selecting and thus provides a, a valuable tool for a preferred vehicle design as you just heard before. Uh, and the factors to be taken into account are not only technical uh, influencing factors but also operational requirements as well as economic and uh, ecologic. Um, let me show you one slide uh, as it is published by Allianz Pro Schiene in October 23, the last time. Um, here you see uh, one key factor for considering uh, vehicle technology uh, with the background from the uh, infrastructure. And you see, for example, uh, Switzerland uh, has nearly 100% uh, uh, electrification in their uh, railway network uh, of all routes uh, uh, there. In Austria, uh, the, uh, the rate is 71%, for example. In Germany, 61%. And as we hear already, uh, all over Europe, it's only... Uh, Seven, uh, 57% or 58 uh, as Max has it. Maybe that's uh, because this, uh, this figure is from last year. Um, and this, this is a factor in determining which technology solution for decarbonization uh, is even possible. Let me show you a, a, a few facts uh, from the state of the art. Um, it's uh, uh, what are the, the possible energy uh, so, uh, storage systems. Either it's synthetic uh, fuel, it's currently quite uh, expensive. Accumulators, uh, the current uh, standard lithium-ion batteries um, uh, system um, is used. The number of charging cycles there is, uh, is limited. Uh, in order to ensure a long service life, only a reduced part of the nominal capacity uh, can be, uh, really be used in operation. But here the research uh, uh, into improvements is ongoing. Supercaps might have uh, uh, 10 to 100 times higher uh, power density and larger number of cycles but uh, they have a, a quite low energy density. And finally, the uh, hydrogen uh, is suitable for generating the electricity uh, uh, using fuel cells in the train. It's where, uh, very sustainable, especially when using green hydrogen, of course. Uh, in this current diagram, you can see now the uh, relationship between energy density uh, in kilowatt hour uh, per kilogram versus efficiency in uh, percent uh, for the various forms of storage. Uh, the state of the art uh, of rail vehicles is based primarily on the energy supply via overhead line, as you uh, know. Um, as shown in the two slides before. Uh, this results uh, in a tank-to-wheel efficiency, efficiency, which is uh, definitely above 80% uh, for uh, EMUs. Please excuse that uh, some of these slides uh, are labeled in German language. Uh, again, one more, the energy efficiency and the weight. Um, here you see uh, the energy, uh, the, um, how much uh, electrical energy must be generated in order to have one kilowatt hour uh, for electrical energy available in the vehicle. In principle, 
storage in batteries is currently many times more energy efficient than the production of hydrogen or uh, then uh, once more again uh, difference for synthetic diesel from electricity and reconversion in the vehicle. And then uh, looking on energy efficiency and weight, uh, we uh, see uh, uh, another graphic which uh, in, uh, here we compare the weight of the energy sources uh, depending on the energy available in the vehicle. Hydrogen and diesel have an offset due to the uh, units required for energy conversion, um, fuel cell or uh, internal combustion engine. In addition, parts for the uh, tank and pipes are taken into account. Approximately uh, 5,000 kilowatt hours correspond to the electrical energy that uh, can be generated from a usual uh, tank volume uh, for a two-part DMU, uh, taking efficiency into account. Accordingly, only hydrogen and diesel can currently provide the amount of energy for really long distances without re recharging. And uh, one more comparison here, um, the, uh, for the energy density in this table, normed to diesel with factor one, you see the much uh, lower energy density of accumulator of battery solutions, but a factor of about uh, 2.8 for liquid hydrogen. Hearing uh, these uh, several factors, uh, we, uh, we can have a look on, uh, on hybridization or a combination of the, uh, of the systems. Since all available electrical and chemical storage systems currently have a lower energy density uh, than liquid and gaseous media, application-specific application configurations or modular concepts appear to be useful unless uh, they are purely electric vehicles uh, with a continuous overhead line for energy supply. Hydrogen trains are basically also uh, battery-powered trains, but just with a smaller battery as for uh, uh, battery EMUs uh, directly. In addition to the requirements of regular operation, uh, disruption scenarios or operational uh, diversions result in important requirements for energy reserves in the vehicle. In addition to traction energy, also uh, a considerable amount of energy is required for heating, air conditioning, auxiliary systems, which on slow moving routes, especially with a high air conditioning requirement, can be nearly on the same level as for the traction energy requirement. Uh, a hybrid drive uh, will usually be larger and heavier than a conventional drive uh, system alone. EMUs, which are expanded to include an energy storage device, are uh, particularly suitable as a basis for uh, such further development. Such vehicles are primarily uh, suitable for extending a train route beyond an electrified track. The range can be uh, increased uh, by recharging stations and on track and by electrification uh, in sections. Vehicles with a fuel cell enable, similar as an internal combustion engine with a generator, a long range due to the high powerful density, high, <laughs> to the high power uh, density of the energy sources. These energy sources can be uh, designed and support the electric, uh, electrical and chemical storage media or as a main energy source. The storage media must be dimensioned in such a way that the braking energy generated is completely stored and the 
energy generated in the vehicle can be temporarily stored uh, as far as possible in order to operate the fuel cell then at the optimal uh, performance point. A modular design of the drive as well as installation space and mass reserves keep a vehicle open for operations to operate also on non-electrified uh, tracks. I hope I was able to give you a, a, a little insight into the numerous factors that influence the design of vehicles and the various aspects uh, that need to be taken into account uh, for a targeted design of new vehicles and for individual operating requirements. We at PROSE uh, are happy to support you in choosing the right fleet strategy the best concept and investment plan for respective uh, applications. Thank you.